every sickness in the name of Jesus. And Father, we lift up a special prayer this morning for Derek Fields in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, we're calling on you on his behalf this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord God, and we're thanking you in advance for what you're doing already, oh God. Lord God, we understand that the doctors have given a bad report on this day, Father God. But Lord God, we're going to stand in faith, oh God. We're going to stand with them this morning, oh God. Lord God, trusting you and trusting you in your word, oh God, that by your stripes that he is healed in the name of Jesus. Lord God, and we thank you in advance, oh God. So we stand firm and we say thank you. Come on and say thank you with me this morning. Stand firm and we say thank you this morning. We bind the enemy on every hand, every tactic, every stronghold that he has against him. We bind that cancer right now and we cast it back to the very pits of hell of where it comes from. We believe the report of the Lord. We recognize what the doctors have said. And what the doctors have said is truly fact. But we're standing, and we're standing in faith this morning. Lord, and we're trusting you, oh God. And we're trusting your word, oh God. And we're trusting that he will come through in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you this morning. Lord, we praise you this morning. Lord, we glorify you this morning, oh God. And we give you all praise and honor this morning. Now, Father, as we continue to pray, Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus that you touch Pastor Rita this morning, oh God. I ask, Lord God, that you give her a word, oh God, from on high, Lord God, that will change the hearts of your people this morning, oh God. And I ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, as she comes, Lord, as she comes, Lord, begin to bring signs and wonders, oh God, all across this airwaves, Lord God, all across this sanctuary this morning, in the name of Jesus. Lord, miracles, signs and wonders fall all in this place. And we, as your people, shall forever give you all the praise and you all the glory in the mighty, majestic name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And let the church say amen and amen and amen. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a hand of praise. We blessing you this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We thank you for every heart being healed this morning, oh God. We thank you for every sickness being healed this morning, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that we're made whole in the name of Jesus.
bless you this morning, oh God. We give you all praise, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Just have your way, Spirit of the living God. Have your way, Spirit of the living God. We surrender all to you this morning, oh God. Hallelujah. Send your spirit, oh God. Send your spirit, oh God, like never before, Lord God, all across the airwaves in the name of Jesus. To every hospital room, oh God, send your spirit, oh God, like never before, oh God. Touch, heal, deliver, set free in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, how we love you, Jesus. Oh, how we love you, Jesus. Oh, how we love you, Jesus. There's none like you, Father. There's none like you, Jesus. May God of the Lord you have your way. Have your way. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you for your presence in this place, oh God. We thank you for your presence in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, all right. We coming on in. We coming on in, Lord God. We coming on in. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you're doing, God. So 
I can't help but to praise him. And I can't help but to long for him. Because I know a life without him. Even though I was saved, but I wasn't with him. And I know what it's like to live in sin and be saved. I know what it's like. But he delivered me. Yes. Am I perfect? No. But I'm seeking after the face of God, not the hand of God. I need his face. I need his presence. when we leave out of here today that there will be a fire that will burn through us like never before. I thank you and I praise you in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Somebody put your hands together for the Lord. Chapter 1 and verse 8, Holy Spirit, 
have your way in here through this dirt vessel in Jesus' name. Because I'm excited again because we went out again, y'all. Hold up, wait a minute. And I tell you, we had an exciting time. Now this this week, and, and me and Kim, we always talking, right? And I said, man, we got a hold of a lot of people that was uh, looking forward to leaving the country and coming back. So we talked to a lot of people in different countries yesterday, right here in Buckeye, y'all, in different countries. Amen. And so we prayed for them. We we prayed for we prayed uh, healing. Uh, people got uh, saved, and uh, it, it, it was just an amazing time. And I'm going to tell you this. If your fire ever get dim and you don't have the passion like you used to have, go and set out on purpose to pray somebody into the kingdom of God and watch your cup run over. Because I'm telling you this morning, listen, I, was, I could not be contained in my own room. I don't know about Pastor Kim. I don't know about Terrence. But I could not be contained because there is, it, it is the most powerful thing that we could ever do. And if you want to get a fresh refill, go out there and start witnessing. Amen? But anyway, Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, But ye shall receive power, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, Jesus said, both in Jerusalem and Judea and in Sam Sam uh, Sam uh, Samaria and in Phoenix and in Buckeye and in Avondale and in Scottsdale and in Glendale. Come on, somebody. Things are continuously falling off of your lives. 
So if you, some of you who are believers and you still got some issues going on, don't stop walking with it. Don't bag up. Don't shut up and don't give up. Because in due time, he's going to clean you up. Come on, somebody. Is that all right? Can I get a witness? But then it says here, why should I be a soul winner? Why should I be a soul winner? Why should you be a soul winner? You are a witness of Christ Jesus and what he done. We as leaders, men and women of God in the church, have a, a mandate on our lives that is, that is soul winning. Before any other ministry in the church, this one is the most important one. This one right here is the most important. Soul winning is the most important. Let me tell you this. So we go out there and we soul winning, right? You know, and uh, I'm sitting on my floor this morning and I began to lift up my son and, 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 and decree and declare over his life and, and my grandchildren. But somebody that I ministered to yesterday, their family was praying for them. You get it? But God sent a witness to come and minister to that person where they had been trying to talk to him for years. Get saved. Jesus loves you. He holds nothing against you. And they refused but this one particular day on a Saturday. 79, 77 degrees outside. Three folks came and knocked on the door. He didn't speak no English, so I called on the telephone and found me somebody that spoke English. I mean Spanish, and used the tools that I had. And this young man gave his life to Christ. So I don't know what his back pass was, but do you understand what I'm talking about? When we go out and we soul win, we are, listen, being used as that instrument to somebody's prayer being answered because we obey God. Because we obey God said that your first mandate, your only and first mandate is to win souls to the kingdom of God. Second Corinthians 5 and 17, you can put that up for me please. Thank you so much. Um, I want to give a shout out to uh, Pushanda for always doing my, my uh, y'all give her a hand praise. Real. Let me tell you what time I called her. I got a hold of her this morning. It must have been about 8.30. Usually I do it on a Saturday night, but I forgot, right? And that girl got up, still talking groggy and sleepy. Tell me, I got you, Miss Rita. I got you. She got it together for me. You know what I, I speak the blessings over her and her whole household in the name of Jesus, for her service unto the Lord, not to Pastor Rita. But anyway, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and through 19, I'm going to read it out of the King James, and it should be the same way up on the PowerPoint. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, now do we got some folk up in here that is in Christ? Can I get a witness? Uh-huh. The new creation has come. So I want to, uh, before I get move on from here, that there has been a new creation that has been in, imputed on the inside of you. Meaning that the old you is dead. Never to come alive again. There's a new creation in you, a new creature in you. Christ Jesus, the hope of glory. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Now I'm sorry that your flesh still looks the same. I'm sorry that your mind has it all the way lined up with the will of God, but that's all right. The word of God and the power of Holy Spirit don't get your thought pattern together. Don't worry about it. But the most important thing that we have to remember is that we are a new creation in Christ Jesus. No matter what we have to go through. Let me keep going. Then it says, the old has gone. Now, I don't know if that makes anybody feel good or not, but it sure makes me feel good. And when we go out there and we minister the gospel, we got to know that when we give them a hug and we give them information and we get their information, that when we turn around and we walk away from them, we know that the old them is gone. Yeah. 
and never to return again, that the new creation has just entered by the power of God, amen, through their confession of faith in Christ Jesus. That's how powerful it is. Let me explain this to you, that when we minister to somebody, it is the greatest miracle on earth, and we get to be a part of the greatest miracle on earth. Says the old is gone, the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us, the church, the believers, those that are already saved, gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sin against them. Can we stop right there? their sin against them. Now, I don't know about you, but yes, we do have to repent, right? I'm not saying that. We gotta repent. But I wanna say this for the believer, that the sins, past, present, and future, has already been taken care of on the cross. When we repent, that means that we're coming back into fellowship. I sinned, and, and when I was sinning, I came out of fellowship because I decided to do my own thing. But now, Lord God, I repent, and I'm coming back. Y'all right. all right with that? Amen? Amen. I, I don't think God's going to take my salvation away because I don't get it right. Come on. I'm about to run around the room. Where the feet at? Where the feet at? Where the feet at? Yes, sir. Wouldn't that be terrible? If you didn't make the mark and then all of a sudden you lose salvation, we don't serve a God like that. So you understand what I'm saying? When we go out and we minister the gospel, it's so much happening for the new believer. And he has committed to us the very message of reconciliation. So we talked about last week, what, what was reconciliation? It involved a change and the relationship between man and God. Because when we were unsaved, I would probably like to say it that we were an enemy to God. Because we was on the wrong team. That's right. That's right. We was an enemy. So the relationship had to be changed through salvation, the ministry of reconciliation, meaning, let, let me say it again, involves a change in the relationship. See, once we were lost and was an enemy of God, and then when we get saved, we become a son of God. You become a son of God, and listen, from that moment forward, there's nothing you can do about it, you're a son of God. You are the son of the living God. That person that you minister to, that one that you pray for to enter into the kingdom of heaven, that person is now in relationship with God. Amen? Amen. Listen, we have the opportunity to minister to the lost, to get these very things taken care of. And just like we're praying for our children, there are many people that are out there praying that are believers praying for their families. And I'm going to say it again. We get to enter in and be an active, active participant in the miracle of their family member getting saved. You know? To God be all the glory, but we get to be a participant. Do you understand? We participate in the miracle. God performs the miracle, but we just get to participate. And I think I like that. Uh-huh. Yeah. From this day forward, I, I, I want you to be encouraged. Holy Spirit is waiting to partner with you. He's waiting to partner with you so that you can be a participant in the greatest, the most greatest miracle. Healings have nothing to do with salvation. I mean, not nothing to do with it, but it, 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 what I'm trying to say, 
is that self, winning a soul to the kingdom of God is way up here. Can I say healing is here? Deliverance is here, but this is the greatest. This is the greatest one. The greatest miracle on earth is when a soul gives their lives to Christ Jesus. It's the greatest miracle to me. Maybe not to you, but the greatest miracle because once we come into fellowship with God, all things are possible. Healing, deliverance, total restoration of finances, total restoration in your family. But if you're not saved, that peace, that joy, everybody running around trying to be happy and joyful. But all we need is the Holy Ghost. Gives us unspeakable joy. Hallelujah. The majority of Jesus' ministry was outside of the temple, meaning it was outside of the church. And that's what he did. He went from place to place. Am I correct? He talked to the woman at the, at, at the well. He, he talked to Nicodemus, amen? But he was not always in the church. And I just want to tell everybody that's online, get outside the church, get out of the, 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 the Facebook thing, and go and take this message to those that are lost. In your highways and in your byways. And participating in the greatest miracle on earth. Amen. Amen? Can I get a witness? Hey, hey. Ooh, can I get a witness? Louder than that. Can I get a witness? Hey, hey. Hallelujah. Let's see here. Go to Mark 16 and 15. Still recapping, y'all. I hope I, I'm going to get through this. Y'all get me all excited and caring all this. Yes, you did good. Mark 16 and 15, and he said unto them, somebody say, go. go. Say, go. go. I need to hear it all over the room. Go. go. Online, say, go. go. Ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen? Amen. Matthew 28 and 19 says, go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Now, in both of these accounts, it says go. That means that the go means to leave from where you are and go somewhere else and do as I asked you to do. Preach the gospel to every creature. Go. So, go might be on your job. Go might be in your doctor's office. Go might be at the gas station while you're pumping. Go might be, listen, in the supermarket. Go might be in the restaurant. Go might be at your theater that you're about to go to. That's where your go might be. So sometimes it's not that you purposely, like we did on, on, on uh, the last couple of Saturdays, to purposely go out and do it, but it is in your everyday life. We what? Go. Somebody say we go. Amen. All right. Part two. Why should we go and win souls to the kingdom of God? Y'all ready? Because the world is full of sinners. Just like we were. And somebody did come and see about us. Amen. Go to Luke 10 and 2. Luke 10 and 2. Thank you. Y'all ready? Therefore said he unto them, The harvest is truly great, but the lab laborers are few. Now let's, let's look at that before we go any further. The harvest... And these last days is truly, truly great because the enemy knows his time is up and is coming. Amen? So that means that he's doing all he can to make sure that he keeps people captive. He makes sure that he keeps his lying tongue doing his work. The manipulation.
manipulation, the drug addiction, the pornography. Come on, y'all, y'all better hear me. Is that a great explosion? Child molestation at a great explosion. They even selling them now. Because he knows his time is up. He's bringing so many different drugs into the schools. And these kids don't have a chance. They have to call the ambulance to come and get our youth out of the school because they have ODs on fentanyl. So what I'm saying is the harvest is great. But then the word says that the labor are few. Can we let that sink in? You can't, you know, uh, 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 you can't befriend any and everybody that is on Facebook. Nor can you befriend anybody on Be Followers or whatever on Instagram. Those are the only two platforms that I, um, I'm on. Because one time somebody sent me a fake account. And when I opened it up, it was pornography. And I immediately clicked it off. And I said, Lord, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. But this is what I'm saying. Sin is running so rapid. So listen, our kids, I don't have a phone, but let's pretend like this is the phone, has the whole world in their hand and has access to anything they want to hear and see. So I'm going to say it again. The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. So let's finish the rest of it. So we, we get that sunk in. Amen. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he should send forth laborers into the harvest. So our prayer as we go is to continue to pray and ask God to send more laborers, more, more witnesses into, listen to this, into the harvest to save souls. Amen? Amen? Is that all right? The harvest field, as we know, is the world. The harvest field, full of all kinds of sin and wickedness. Amen? But the thing about us is that we have the power and the authority. Somebody say power and authority to defeat the works of the enemy. Upon any life that we enter, that we come across, and we begin to usher them into the kingdom of God. Let me explain to you. Some things is going to fall off right then and there. That's right. That's right. That's right. And the devil going to be so mad. Oh, no, no, no. He going to stump off and go, oh, now they know about Jesus. And then the rest of my guys, they going to have to go to Amen. But we carry this testimony in our hearts. We carry our own testimonies in our hearts. And when we go out, and I haven't had a chance, I think last week I might have had a chance, or the week before I might have had a chance to share a little bit of my testimony. But our testimonies is enough to get somebody saved. Amen? We have to make a difference in our world for the expansion of the kingdom of God and the growth of, and the growth of international Christian fellowship. So me and Kim talked about that yesterday. You know, we be chopping it up and carrying on. And um, I'm going to say it again. That the enemy knows his time is up. And so he fighting people tooth and nail. And can I say that? I can say that. Because he, 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 he fought me. He didn't win. <laughs> he didn't win. But you, but you get it? And so, and I'm not saying anything but we as International Christian Fellowship
fellowship. We have the anointing. We have the power to minister to the lost, to minister to the sick. We have that power and we have that authority. Amen? Can I get a witness? Amen. All right. So here we go now. Here you go to 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. This is it right here, y'all. Uh-huh. 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. I'm glad that you are uh, writing your notes down. I'm glad that you're following along in your Bible and highlighting and doing all of that kind of stuff. Amen. Go back on these notes that you are creating right now that Holy Spirit has given you uh, uh, revelation of. And throughout this week, I want you to study these, your notes that Holy Spirit has given you. Amen. Amen. 2 Corinthians 4 and 4 says, Satan, who is the God of this world? Who's the God of this world? Satan, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. Can we stop right there? Now you remember I told you he knows his time is up and he's just acting a plum old fool. You understand? So what he has did purposely was made sure that he ain't fooling too much with us old, let me, let me say it, with these old folks. But he's after the new generation. He's, he's after our grandchildren. He's after our grandchildren's children. Yes. He's after, you, you understand what I'm saying? Yes. To blind their eyes so that they don't see because he has given the, the world has put in our children's, our children's, children's hand exposure to the whole world. So let's go on. Satan, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the kingdom of God. The glorious light of the good news, please forgive me. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. They don't understand. And we should immediately pray that the scales be removed from their eyes. Amen? Amen? And so that is what's keeping the unbeliever in darkness and in bondage because, because they not saved and they're doing some really bad things. Don't give us the right to call them as we see them. Is it okay that I say that? Because you got to remember they're in the world. And they only doing what the world does. So we don't have a right as the body of Christ to call them as we see them. Amen? But we pray that God will remove the scales yes. from their eyes. Yes. That they may be able to perceive and to come into faith in Christ Jesus and be saved yes. and set free. They're the family members of our, our friends and co-workers on the job. These ones that have been blinded by the enemy. Even our own co-workers, blinded by the enemy. And sometimes we might be the only light in the whole joint. You understand? Yeah. Hold on, let me take that back. Maybe we're not the only one, but maybe we're the crazy bold one. Can I tell you this, the easiest way to win a soul is to catch them when they're going through something and say, can I pray for you? We used that for two weeks, didn't we? We used it for two weeks, didn't we? Didn't we? Last week, last week when we went out, can I pray for you? That's the bait. Everybody wants prayer. The worst sinner wants prayer. What can, Pastor Kimberly said 98.5%. <laughs> yeah. Amen? Amen? And they want prayer. So what happens when we pray in the name of Jesus? The spirit of the living God begins to hover. And he comes on the scene, yeah. setting the atmosphere, getting the heart ready. And then the next day, 
everything we say is do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And there you go. And they'll say no. Or they'll say, yes, I do, but, you know, I haven't been to church and, you know, and, mm, you know, no condemnation. Then that other prayer comes, and bam, we got it. So what is the quickest thing to get somebody saved, y'all? Y'all tell me. Ask them what? Can I pray for you? And it worked every time. It was so, listen, you don't have to worry about what to say. One lady I said, baby, don't even open your door. Just tell me what you need us to pray for. Pray for my foot. That lady healed today. I said, don't open your door. Just tell us what you need. Because you know, we in, the, we in the apartment complex. I said, don't tell us. I said, but just don't open the door. I said, just tell us what you need. Yeah. My, well, I got to, I can't, it can't be long because I'm standing on my foot. My foot ain't no good. She was a little sassy. And that's okay. But today she healed. Because we came and touched in agreement in the name of Jesus on one particular thing. And Jesus said, if you ask anything in my name and, and all of y'all agree, he said, I shall do it. So that woman got up this morning and said, oh, Jesus. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And we wasn't at that door no more than, what, two, three minutes. Miracles, signs, and wonders is in the streets. They came and got Jesus and told him that, that, that J. Iris' daughter was sick, but Jesus was on his way somewhere. And then the woman with the, the issue of blood, Jesus was still on his way somewhere. You understand what I'm saying? He was on his way to J. Iris' daughter, J. Iris' house to, to heal his daughter, but the woman came up because Jesus was on his way. He was using the word go. And he was on his way to pray for somebody else. And one woman was crazy enough, broke all of their religious rules and came out and touched the hem of his garment. And she was made whole. She broke all their religious rules. Every religious rule there was were the Pharisees and the Sadducees. If they would have known that the woman was unclean, they would have stoned her, but she didn't care. She took a chance because she said, if only I can touch the hem of his garment, she said, I shall be made whole. And so when we go to door to door, we don't know what folks have already prayed for. We don't know what they have already been crying out to the Lord. And then here comes little ICF. Tick, tick, tick. They don't want to answer the door. You ain't got the answer to door. Jesus walked up, th walked through the walls, and went and came and talked to the to apostles that was hiding. He don't need you to open no door for him. Right. Y'all all right with that? Right. And so those are the kind of things that we're gonna encounter when we go out there. But I, we ain't afraid. So let me tell you something. I now, now, you know, uh, when we went out the week before and we went out last week. You know, we did some stairs, but the majority of them, you know, uh, because yesterday we all had to be together. But last week, uh, Abel and Jessica took the upstairs. I took the downstairs because, you know, my age. I use that as collateral, right? But you understand what I'm saying? So don't, don't even let that be. You can just get to one door. Listen, you won't want to get to another door. Because it excites you so much to see, listen, for somebody to say, thank you so much, you were exactly what we needed. Yeah. Right. Amen? Amen? So can I get a witness? Yeah. Come on, I say it louder than that. Can I get a witness? Yeah. And that is being a witness. Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen? So after we pray for them, like I said, there will be a perfect opportunity to go and tell them that are lost of the saving grace of Jesus so that their eyes may be opened and turned from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to the power of Almighty God that they too may receive forgiveness of their sins and have 
a place among those who are sanctified by faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. They have a place in the body of Christ as soon as they receive. It ain't no process. It's instant. They turn from darkness to light. They turn from sinner to righteous. Then at that very moment, they can go before God legally. Legally in right standing. All their sins have been washed away by the blood of Jesus. That when God sees them right after you have prayed and they have believed and received salvation, they can go before a pure and holy God. Shameless. Holy and sanctified because ICF was crazy enough because they witnesses to go out and knock on doors in 97 degree weather. Because we chose to allow God to use us to, to assist and be a partaker in the greatest miracle on earth, and that is salvation. Do I still got a witness? Amen. <laughs> it is a priority that we live this type of Christian lifestyle. We want to remember that those that we know, if they don't get saved and they die, they go to hell for eternity. I said it last week. And you know, don't nobody talk about hell but y'all's wild pastor. Because first of all, I know what hell is on earth. I ain't forgot. I, I don't know. I haven't forgot. You know, and every now and then I think about it. I say, oh, Lord, I thank you. Tears roll down my face. Thank you so much. Because he didn't have to do it, but he did. But I was in hell on earth and didn't know how I was going to get out. But God had a witness. But if they are alive and they have not made Jesus Christ their Lord and personal Savior, the only way to the Father is through the Son. The only way to get to the Son is by salvation. And so if they, if they die and they're not saved, they go in the hell. That's a bitter pill. But it's a pill that it causes us to be in urgency about. <sighs> Preaching the gospel to the lost. Because if we don't go, God says that if you don't go, there's going to be some folk going to go to hell with. I mean, is that what that was kind of heavy? So you understand, I put you in Buckeye, Arizona. I put you in Buckeye, and I can't get you to go out there and minister the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they need you to be a witness. Because they either signed them to answer the door on a particular day, right? To open the door, or maybe not open the door and speak to you through a crack or scream, but I've assigned you that day, but I couldn't get a witness. That's pretty heavy, ain't it? So if he don't use us, here it is, he gonna use somebody else. Thank God. I don't want him not to use me. Is that all right that I say that? I don't want him not to use me. You don't want him not to use you. I don't want to be the believer that's on the sideline going. But when I was in the world, I was in the trenches. And so how did I get in the kingdom of God and don't want to go in the trenches? Because if don't nobody know the trenches, we do. We know the trenches. We know them when we see them. Amen? 
So let's take everything that we know and share it to the world that they, that they, that they shall live. Go to Proverbs 11 and 30. Let's talk about this, y'all. Proverbs 11 and 30. Y'all all right? Somebody's, hold on, y'all ready? Can I get a witness? <laughs> I like that. Can I get a witness? Proverbs 11 and 30 says, The fruit of righteousness is a tree of life, and he that went of souls is wise. He that went of souls is skillful and intelligent. The fruit of our righteousness is life to those who are perishing. The fruit of our righteousness is fruit to those who are perishing. So when we began to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ to the lost, the fruit of our righteousness, amen, gives them substance and causes them to come to believe. So when it says the fruit of righteousness is life to those who are perishing because we are positioned in right standing with God to carry eternal life in our mouth that is the gospel of Jesus Christ to the lost. So how do we do it? How do we do it? Somebody say by following Jesus. Matthew 4 and 19. Matthew 4 and 19. Y'all all right? And he said unto them, Jesus said, follow me. That means leave some things behind and follow me. Follow me and make me the priority in your life. He said, I'll make you fishers of men. I'll fill your mouth with the gospel of Jesus Christ and everyone you minister to. You'll see mighty signs and wonders and miracles take place. He says, follow me. Amen. This was the purpose of the disciples, and that was to be fishers of men. And later, they were called apostles. But their first call was disciples. But in that, in that position as disciples until the day we die, there's a work that goes with discipleship. There is a work. Amen? And even though they were later called apostles, their mission, it never changed. And that winning soul, the, the mission never changed, and that was winning souls while starting churches and overseeing them all. Now, the apostles were the disciples who Jesus was saying, Follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. They had no idea that one day that they would start churches and minister all over the regions, and that the gospel of Jesus Christ, because they followed Jesus, that me and you would be sitting here today, they had no idea. The churches all over the world, in the name of Jesus Christ, would be established because 12 men decided to follow Jesus. Amen? Go to Acts four, uh, 5 and 42. Hallelujah. It says here, how much time I got? I got to ask for time, please. My parents, she said, I got five minutes. Y'all ready? Here we go. And daily in the temple and every house, they cease not to teach and preach Jesus. Amen? Go to Romans 1 and 6. Uh, Romans 1 and 16. Now listen to this. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. Somebody say, I'm not ashamed. Because it is the power of God. When we go out there and we minister the gospel, the power of God is being released, amen? That brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentiles. Go to 2 Corinthians 5 and 
Corinthians 5 and 19. And it says that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them, and he was committed to he committed to us the message of reconciliation. So that is our assignment. So when we go out there, listen, go, uh, go to uh, 1 John 1 and 9, listen to this. We go out there. Here it is. Here is the, I would say, the structure of it. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So when, when they confess their sins and they ask Jesus to forgive them of all of their sins, amen, he does just that. And it purifies them from all of their unrighteousness and puts them in a position of righteousness that now they can go before God Almighty without guilt or shame because I have seen what to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ to the lost. Somebody give God a hand praise. Come on, y'all. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Amen. We had a wonderful time out uh, yesterday, and um, I'm grateful, and we're going to do it again. We're going to do it again. We're going to do it again. And um, if you guys uh, that have not been with us and you want to go, you can go. Amen? Because all of us are disciples of Christ Jesus. Amen? And so what I want to say here is, if there is anyone that is online right now and you are not saved, amen, you're not saved, and you have not asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart, and let's just say you're backslidden. And if that is you and you would like to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I mean, because you know what, somebody shared this video with you and you done got to the end, and you heard in the middle of the message that if you not saved, you go to hell. And you're like, I better get my life right because I know that people have been trying to talk to me and I have not listened. But when I heard you say it, Pastor, I got it. And if you got it, you're about to get it. Amen. So what I need you to do, if you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and he died on the cross for all of your sins, and that he rose from the grave on the third day. And that if he is seated at the, that you believe that he is seated at the right hand of the Father. And one day will come back for his church. And if you believe that with all of your heart, I need you to say the prayer after me. And let's just say you backslid. Amen. And you know and you know that you know that you know you backslid. I need you to say the prayer right along with me also. Amen. Because all it does is take a, a prayer of repentance to put us back into fellowship. I said that earlier today. Amen. Hallelujah. So repeat that prayer after me and everybody in the room is praying in the spirit. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to forgive me for all of my sins. I do believe, Lord God, that Jesus is the Son of God and that he died on the cross for all of my sin, all of my sickness, and all of my diseases. He died on the cross for my drug abuse and every other abuse that I have been affiliated with that he died on the cross for. And I do believe that he is coming back and that he rose from the grave the third day. I ask you, Lord Jesus, upon the confession of my faith, I ask you to come into my heart that I be born again, that the old me will depart and behold, all things will become new. So I receive you, Lord Jesus, 
as my Lord and as my Savior. And my confession of faith is, today is the day of my salvation. Today is the day of my recommitting myself to Christ in Jesus' name. If you have said that prayer, welcome to the kingdom of God. If you have said that prayer, come on, y'all, put your hands together. Come on all over the room. Amen. And if you were that one that was backslidden, welcome back into fellowship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Because they were waiting on this day because he loves you so much. Amen. His arm is not too short to save. His arm is not too short to deliver. And today is the day of your deliverance, and today is the day of your salvation. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, family, it is now time for our tithes and offering. Amen. Oh, come on up here. He got new Crocs on and everything, Mickey D Crocs. Did I tell you that, I don't know if I told you, but did you know these were golfing tennis shoes? Oh, well, I want you to check them out right quick, okay? <laughs> Just say, I mean, because I'm around a pro golfer, I need to let him know that, right? Amen. Um, we have the um, cash up, which is dollar sign ICF Church One. For those of you who are online, um, we got two different gadgets going here, and so we're not able to put it up online. But it is dollar sign. ICF Church One. Dollar sign. ICF Church One. And for time's sake, if you are bringing your, your, your tithe to the storehouse, God said in his word that he would open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough for. He also said that he will rebuke the devourer from coming up against your finances. Amen? And if you are bringing your seed to sow seed in the ground, he said that because you are a sower in the kingdom of God, that I will continue to give you seed to sow and bread for food. So as you are sowing your seed into the kingdom of God, he says that I will always make sure that you will have what you need. Amen? So if everyone is ready, amen, please stand to your feet. And let's go ahead and pray over our offering. And for those of you who are online, go ahead and stand to your feet so we can get your offering prayed for. Father, we thank you. And we praise you, Lord God, for the seed and for the tithe that we usher up to you, Lord Jesus. And we pray, Father, that this offering and the, the tithe is acceptable and pleasing to you because they come from a pure heart, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, that every one of our needs are met and that there is no lack in our lives, Lord God, because we are givers. And we thank you that you have opened up the windows of heaven and poured us out so much blessing that we don't have room enough for it, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you have called us, Lord God, to finance the kingdom of God, that the gospel may go all over the world. We thank you and we praise you. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak blessings, the blessing of Abraham over the lives of every giver and those that wanted to give but had nothing to give. But I ask that, Lord God, that you would give them the increase and to bless them and to multiply their seed. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, well, somebody put your hands together for the Lord, amen. I mean, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to have... Uh, Deacon Abel, come up and he's going to do the benediction. Amen. Come on, somebody, put your hands together for this mighty man of God. Jesus. and let me talk about Jesus, I'm going to get in trouble. I'll tell you right now. No. All right, all right. First, I just want to say thank you for Pastor Rita and Pastor Kim. Thank you for these incredible pastors that just keep going, that just keep going. And remember, airplanes don't take off when it's, you know, smooth. They take off against the wind. So don't forget that. 
So just remember that. And uh, you know, y'all the captains of this captains of the boat right now. So remember, if uh, the, the sea is smooth, then you ain't gonna be a good sailor, sailor, right? So it's gonna be struggle and it's gonna be trouble. So just, just keep going. So. Appreciate you. If it wasn't for y'all, I have nowhere to go. So all right. <laughs> but no, um, seriously. Uh, People online pray for our pastors and pray for the church. Uh, I mean, they're just doing a, a remarkable job. I mean, they show up every day consistently. Uh, I, I don't think I could have done that. So just God bless y'all. Thank y'all. God bless your family, your bloodline, your generation. God bless you. Thank you. So anyway, uh, dear Father God, Lord Jesus, Father God with the big G, dear Father God with the big G, Lord Jesus, thank you for today. Today is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Father God, I pray, Lord, that all of our needs are met, whether we're saints or whether uh, we're just coming back to you. I just pray, Father God, that all of our needs are met. I pray that everybody that's attending our church, watching this sermon, I'm praying that everybody is eating, everybody is staying cool when it's hot outside. And uh, I just pray, Father God, that our needs are met, God. And I just uh, pray, Father God, for a hedge of protection for everybody who, who comes to this church, for everybody who does what you assigned us to do, God. And I just pray, Father God, that uh, you give us the grace to, to make it another week. Give us the grace and mercy. Give us the strength. Give us the joy. Give us extra joy. Give us some uh, peace. Give us extra peace, God, because uh, it's getting rough, God. And I just pray, Father God, that uh, you help us this week, Lord. And I, you bless the saints. You bless the newcomer. And I just, I thank you, Lord, for dying for our sins, Lord. And uh, please bless us this week. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. You are dismissed.